Hi, let's look today at a video way back from 1987, produced by Apple. So Apple was trying to show us what the future would look like, and I actually remember 1987 because I had just graduated from high school and watched this video, and I was astounded at where the future was going to go. Let's see how accurate they are. You have three messages. Your graduate research team in Guatemala, just checking in. Robert Jordan, a second semester junior, requesting a second extension on his term paper. And your mother reminding you about your father's surprise birthday party next Sunday. Today you have a faculty lunch at 12 o'clock. Notice first of all the device that we've got here. It's a very flat looking thing, almost like an iPad. So the iPad didn't show up until 2010, and there were other things kind of like it, as the Newton was supposedly going to be the first portable device. But uh, you notice how flat it is and how nice the screen looks. Let's remember now that back at this time, computers were still kind of like MS-DOS, or even the Macintosh itself was still black and white, nothing like what they saw here. So the device itself has pretty much come to pass. You need to take Kathy to the airport by 2. You have a lecture at 4.15 on deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. Right. Let me see the lecture notes from last semester. No, that's not enough. I need to review more recent literature. Pull up all the new articles I haven't read yet. Journal articles only? Mm-hmm, fine. Your friend Jill Gilbert has published an article about deforestation in the Amazon and its effects on rainfall in the Sub-Sahara. It also covers drought's effect on food production in Africa and increasing imports of food. Something else that you might take for granted when looking at this is the simple fact that it's networked. So most computers didn't really connect to any kind of a local area network and even less with the internet. America Online brought many people somewhat closer to it, but it wasn't until later when people would just assume that every application was able to communicate with other servers. So for the second feature that you see in this app, I'll give them a 10 out of 10, that networking and personal communication really hits it on the nose. Contact Jill. I'm sorry, she's not available right now. I left a message that you had called. Okay, let's see. There's an article about five years ago, Dr. Flemson or something. He really disagreed with the direction of Jill's research. John Fleming of Uppsala University. He published in the Journal of Earth Science of July 20 of 2006. Yes, that's it. He was challenging Jill's projection of the amount of carbon dioxide being released to the atmosphere through deforestation. I'd like to recheck his figures. Here's the rate of deforestation he predicted. Mm hmm and what happened? Hmm, he was really off. Give me the university research network. Show only universities with geography nodes. Show Brazil. Copy the last 30 years at this location at one month intervals. Perhaps the most striking feature of the whole thing is the brain behind it. This virtual assistant is pictured to be much, much smarter than Alexa or Siri or anything that has been up until last year. So 2022 seems to be the change when ChatGPT is able to communicate and write software and talk to us in a way that makes sense rather than a stupid internet assistant. And so one of the statements that the professor makes here is, I'd like to see her figures. Uh, the context there is pretty obvious to us as humans, but you'd have to have been able to follow the previous line of conversation to make that any sense at all. And so Apple was realizing that eventually we're going to have AI agents that can remember what we just said and what the context is so that way we can get information to us. Excuse me, Jill Gilbert is calling back. Great, put her through. Hi Mike, what's up? Jill, thanks for getting back to me. 
Well, I guess that new grant of yours hasn't dampened your literary abilities. Rumor has it that you've just put out the definitive article on deforestation. Aha. Is this one of your typical last-minute panics for lecture material? No, 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 no. That's not until, um... 4.15. <sighs> well, it's about the effects that reducing the size of the Amazon rainforest can have outside of Brazil. I was wondering, um... It's not really necessary, but, uh... Mm, yes? <sighs> it would be great if you were available to make a few comments. Also, you notice the communication directly between two people on a video call. That seems pretty common today, doesn't it? But, of course, it was revolutionary in 1987, almost like a Dick Tracy watch, that someday we can see each other on the computer screen. Well, I guess the pandemic brought us all to the point where we're sick and tired of watching Zoom calls. But they got it right. You can talk to each other in face-to-face -face video. Um, print this article before I go. Now printing. Okay, I'm going to lunch now. If Kathy calls, tell her I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Also, find out if I can set up a meeting tomorrow morning with, um, Tom Lee. Enjoy your lunch. So what's your opinion? Did Apple nail it? Did they get something a little bit exaggerated? Uh, what do you say? Put it in the comments below and see if you agree. So my name is Shad and I teach software development and so if you like technology and you want to learn to be a software developer, check out the other videos on my channel and you too can get a career as a software developer.